Hi Capricorn, this is Teresa from Tarot by T. Welcome to February. Before I start your reading, I'm going to call in some good energy. So this month, we have Venus moving out of your sign and moving into Aquarius on February 2nd. And that's good because it's going to it's moving into your second house of money and finance. And then we have a new moon in Aquarius on February 11th. And then Mercury, which has been retrograding in Aquarius, is going to move forward on February 21st. And then on the 26th, Venus moves out of Aquarius and into Pisces. And then we end the month with a full moon in Virgo on the 27th. Um, so this Virgo uh, Pisces energy is going to be favorable to your sign. We have a stellium of planets in Aquarius, which is operating out of your, and plus the new moon, out of your second house of money and self-worth and value, what you value. So there could be some new beginnings around those topics. In the meantime, uh, let's see what the cards say about love and relationships for Capricorn. What does Capricorn need to know about love and relationships for the month of February 2021? What is coming up for Capricorn? What does Capricorn need to know about love and relationships in February of 2021? Okay, let me just... What does Capricorn need to know? Okay, let's see what we have. Five of Cups, the Eight of Swords, the Five of Swords, the Six of Swords, the Page of Wands, the Nine of Pentacles, the Knight of Swords, the Temperance, the Strength card, and the Sun. Okay, well that's good. So you're starting the beginning of the month with the Five of Cups crossed by the Eight of Swords. So the Five of Cups energy is a, it's a card of regret and a feeling of loss. Like you might be focusing on your losses instead of focusing on what you still have that's valued, that's valuable. Um, the Five of Cups energy fives are like instability. So there could be some instability in a relationship where you may feel like a relationship is... Um, I don't know that it's actually breaking up, but it, it's unstable. And um, there could be also a sense of regret around the Five of Cups. Like if, some, if, you, if you've left a relationship, you may be having second thoughts. Or if you've taken action um, to walk away from something, you might be reconsidering. Sometimes the Five of Cups, and you have the Eight of Swords here crossing it. So like, it's almost like you're feeling trapped. Um, you feel like your hands are tied. There's a sense of loss. You may want to move out of something, but you may feel like I can't. I just can't move. I can't. I can't take action. I feel paralyzed. Um, you have the Five of Swords here in the past. Um, this is toxic energy. You might be dealing with someone's hostility, or you might feel that you're surrounded by a toxic environment or toxic people. Someone who's because this is not good energy. This Five of Swords is um, hostility, feeling like abused in some way, like you're dealing with someone's anger or hostility. And um, sometimes this card comes up when you need to cut your losses and move on because the person that you're dealing with is not going to change. You know, you might be hanging into a relationship, hanging on to a relationship, thinking, well, if I just keep working at it, I'm going to make it better. Um, and I don't know that this is for everyone, but I'm feeling like this special message that some of you just need to cut your losses and move on. If you're existing in some kind of toxic environment, whether it's a relationship or even a work situation. Um, you keep, it's like, you, keep, you don't want to waste your energy trying to change something that can't be changed. Like you might be bashing your head against a brick wall trying to make a difference. 
and the people involved are just they are who they are and they're not going to change so your only option is to accept someone for who they are like okay i realize this is who you are and i can't change you but i love you and i'm going to stick with you and i'm going to accept you for who you are with all your limitations or you can say i just can't deal with this anymore and i want something more and here's the six of swords which is you wanting to move away from difficulty and moving toward you want something that has greater harmony, something that's more fulfilling. But there's fear here with this Eight of Swords. You're like, it's like you're, you feel trapped. Like you feel like there's no way out. Like I'm stuck in this situation and I can't break free. And I don't have any options. You may feel like your options are limited. But that's not the case because I'm seeing cards coming up in the future. You have this Page of Wands and the Nine of Pentacles. There's a message coming. A message that brings hope and good news. That's going to get you out of this rut of st the stuckness. Like you, I feel like you've been stuck. And the Nine of Pentacles. This is a card of freedom. And um, sometimes it comes up when someone decides to... Like a job opportunity could come up that gives you more freedom. Or you may... Um, you may break free of a relationship, but want to, you know, it's like you're not, you don't want to just, how can I explain this? The Nine of Pentacles is a card of material security. So something is coming in the future that's going to give you a sense of material, of, of security. And I think it could be a job offer where you're uh, working for yourself or you're working without you know, like on your own thing, like an independent contractor. I don't know. Um, there's a lot of freedom with this card. Freedom to do your own thing. And because you have this freedom, it's going to give you the courage to get out of anything that's not in your best interest. To leave a toxic situation. So I feel like you have to experience this first before you can move out of whatever's holding you back. Because with the Eight of Swords, that's like feeling imprisoned. Like, I can't move. But really what's... What's stopping you is fear. It's like, I don't, you're really afraid to get out of your comfort zone. Afraid to move away from this situation. Now with the Five of Cups, there is a, um, a chance that you could salvage a relationship if you focus on the positive and not focus on the negative. So, you know, you could be involved with someone that has some issues. Um, especially because the strength card is here. They may have anger issues. Or they may have psychological issues. Um, and they could use some counseling. But if you focus on what's good about the person, you might be able to deal with it. On the other hand, if you feel like, you know, I just need to get out. I need to be with someone else. Um, the universe is supporting that too. So here you're in good place financially. If you decide to make changes, you are in a good place financially and in, and in career. Because um, the Page of Wands is... Um, you know, it's like messages that give you hope, that bring you good news. So there could be some good news coming up in February that's going to give you more confidence to go after what you want, to find this favorable outcome. The one thing that you have to be careful with, you have this Knight of Swords energy here, is not to do anything rash, not to make any decisions without thinking it through, especially because Mercury's retrograde this month and you might not be seeing things clearly or they may, you know, you want to do some research, take your time before you make a final decision. You have this temperance card in your environment. That's a card of like finding a balance. Maybe there's like a work-life balance issue that has to be made. Maybe you've been working too hard in your career and you're neglecting a relationship. Or you could be working more, being so focused on a relationship that you're not paying attention to your career. So this is a card of finding that balance not going to extremes. You could be dealing with someone who's a little bit on the selfish side, um, always wants to fight, and um, you might have to learn how to compromise and meet someone halfway, find that middle ground, create a win-win situation. The strength card in your wish fulfillment, this is a card of taming the beast within, taming your reactive nature. So if someone's pushing your buttons, because with this Five of Swords energy, Someone may be pushing your buttons, wanting you to overreact so they could turn around and point the finger and say, look, see how crazy this person is? You know, 
So you have to be careful. You have to be in charge of your emotions this month and not go to extremes, not overreact if someone's trying to push your buttons. And um, if you're trying to save a relationship with a difficult person, counseling could help. Um, I feel like you could be helping someone through it. Some of you might be helping someone through a difficult time. Maybe a feeling like feeling depressed or someone having a mental mental issues. Um, and you're having to compromise. You're having to work out some type of compromise. Now you have the sun here as an outcome. So this is great because the sun gives hope. So whatever problems you're experiencing at the beginning of the month, you could find a solution. You could overcome them. You have the power to overcome any kind of conflict, any kind of um, tension in a relationship and to create greater harmony. But I think it's going to involve communication. You have to maybe sit down with someone and talk about what's going on and what you need. The sun is a card of marriage. It's a card of um, having fun, creative self-expression. I feel like you need, you've been, may have been working too hard and you need a break to do something fun and to, you know, maybe take some time out to do something creative, something you enjoy, something that brings, um, maybe you've put on the back burner because you've been so busy and it's affecting your mood. And, you know, life may have felt um, like it, it's all work and no play. And it could be affecting your relationships. So I think if you find that work-life balance and you tap into that your creativity or find something like honor your inner child, that could, it'll trickle down and it'll improve not only your work relationships but your personal relationships. Um, so I think you can overcome any challenges. If you're having a challenge, you can uh, work it out through communication. Um, the Nine of Pentacles, you know, for some of you, you may be having career success and then saying, well, what good is having all these material things? What good is having all this money and this security if I have no one to share it with? So some of you may be really wanting to create some kind of relationship. If you're not with someone, you might be wanting to seek that out. And you have the potential to meet up with someone that can be really compatible with you. The only problem is... Um, You have to, you have to, you have to make time for this. If you're too busy working, you're not going to have time to meet anyone, or to get out there, and you know, socialize. I know we're under this pandemic, but we can still meet um, through, you know, Zoom or through the internet. You can still have conversations through the phone. You can do things that require social distancing. Um, it can't be all work and no play this month. I feel like you really need to start um, focusing on the positive and looking for those opportunities when you can get out and do something fun. So let's see. Um, what does the new moon hold? The new, the new moon is coming into your second house. And you've got all this Aquarian energy in your second house. Now the second house is the house of money. Um, the things that we value, material things, things that make us feel safe and secure. But it's also self-esteem. Issues around self-esteem. What am I worth? Um, am I getting what I deserve? Do I think highly enough about myself? Am I settling for too less in life? So these are some of the issues you might be dealing with. And the new moon gives you an opportunity to have a new beginning. So maybe it's a time to really think about are you settling for less and start to claim what you deserve. Start to um, work on your self-esteem. Work on seeing the value within yourself. Um, the challenge at this new moon, I mean, you've got Venus and Jupiter there, so it's bringing money in. So money is going to be, and support and opportunity to earn even more money is going to come in. Now, Mercury is retrograding through the second house, so you have a lot of money-making ideas with Mercury in the second. And you may revisit something that you put on the back burner. Maybe you, weren't, you were too busy to do it at the time, and you're like, well, I don't have time. This is a great time to go back to an idea from the past and rework it and and develop it and make it better the second time around. Now, Mars and Uranus are in your fifth house. It's the house of children. It's the house of romance. It's the house of um, 
creative self-expression, you know, doing something fun. It's the fun house. So, um, maybe you haven't, you kind of had some money issues that prevented you from having fun or going out and doing things. Maybe you've dropped some of your old hobbies that really brought you joy and you need to bring that back. Uh, I feel like there's this conflict between, you know, the work that you're doing and there's no fun. Like you need to have, you have to build in some fun. And this new moon will give you that opportunity to do that. Um, Saturn is in the twelfth, in the second house as well. Um, and Saturn's going to be squaring Uranus. So you may have to um, get a grip on your finances. Or get a grip on your relationship with a romantic partner or child. Maybe there's a conflict between a money situation and a child or a romantic partner. Um, so you might be butting heads or having to renegotiate an agreement. Um, that could come up with this at this new moon. And especially with Saturn in the second house. Um, Saturn represents limitation. But you also have Venus and Jupiter there. So it's kind of balancing each other out. But what Saturn is asking you to do is look realistically at your financial situation. And um, take more responsibility. Be more disciplined about your money. Where is it going? Are you spending too much? Um, are people, you know, taking advantage of your good nature? You know, um, do you have to get serious? Create a, a budget. You know, think about where your money is being invested. You know, so Saturn involves hard work, um, but it also gives you great rewards. So by the end of Saturn's transit through your second house. He will, he will usually leave you with a gift. So he just entered your second house. He's going to be here for two and a half years. You have time. In the meantime, Jupiter and Venus are boosting your income. So February should be a good month financially. I feel like your income is going to get boosted. So, But use your money wisely. Invest it wisely. Spend it wisely. Don't just blow it on something. Um, then we have the full moon. And that's in Virgo. And that's happening in your ninth house. So something is coming to completion around a um, ninth and third house. That's the communication houses. Something is completing around either an educational program. You might be finishing up um, some kind of social media or marketing plan or because the ninth house is the house of um, higher education, teaching, learning. Um, it could be a teaching program or learning. If you're teaching something or you're learning, maybe you're taking classes. Or you're having to have something to do with higher education. You're finishing up some type of training. Um, it could also have to do with uh, a, a marketing campaign or a website or uh, something where you're connecting with a global audience. Something may be coming to completion. Venus is in Pisces at this point and it's going through your third house. So your relationship with relatives, siblings, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles should be better. You're communicating in a more harmonious way. Um, Venus is charming. Um, you know, Venus in Pisces is also very romantic. So if you're looking for love, you could meet someone in your local environment, but you need to get out there. Um, what else is happening? Now this full moon is sextile Uranus and Uranus is in your fifth house. So I think at this full moon, um, something surprising could happen, could develop in the area of romance at the end of the month. So if you're looking for, if you're not dating anyone, um, you could have a surprise opportunity to connect with someone, to have some kind of romantic encounter. Or there could be a surprise, an unexpected opportunity for you to do something creative, to you know utilize your creative skills, your artistic skills, your musical skills, whatever, anything, your writing skills even. Because um, Uranus is the planet of surprise. It's also the planet of freedom. So Uranus wants to free you. It wants you to have fun. Um, so there could be some opportunity, some social thing that comes up at the end of the month. Uh, maybe a get-together or some kind of party that where you're connecting with people and you're able to um, get back into doing something that you had put on the back burner. Um, you might even hear from someone from the past during this month because Mercury is going through your, um, Mercury is retrograding. 
So there could be some past issue that you have to rework, maybe some past financial issue. But when Mercury goes into the third house, um, as it starts to go direct, I think that any any kind of financial matter might be is going to be cleared up. And as it moves, it'll probably go into your third house next month. Um, and that'll be a good time to sign contracts. So right now, if you're dealing with any kind of money situation and you have to sign a contract, um, it's not the best time to sign Well, Mercury is retrograde. Uh, if you have to, read the fine print and make sure that, you know, both parties understand what the deliverables are because there could be miscommunications or misunderstandings, um, unexpected changes with Mercury. Um, so a creative project could go um, take a different direction than you thought it was going to take. Um, but by the end of the month, everything should be, you should be completing something at the end of the month that has to do with some type of communications project and a creative project. And it could turn out to be better than you expected. I think the outcome is going to be positive this month, even though at the beginning you may feel restricted or you may feel um, like your hands are tied, you can't do everything you want to do. But toward the end, if you can learn how to compromise and meet someone halfway and see things from another person's perspective and create some kind of win-win, um, I think that you'll find that the outcome will be positive, that you'll, uh, the end result will be positive and you'll be happy with that. So, um, this is a good money month for you. It's a good time to focus on money and finances and, and your values and your self-worth. And you'll come out stronger at the end of the month than when you entered into it. So I hope this reading was um, was a help to you, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click on the like button, click on the subscribe button. If you'd like a private reading, click on the link in the description box. It'll take you to my website, and we can get you on the schedule. In the meantime, I want to say thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you for watching and commenting and sharing, and thank you for purchasing readings. I've enjoyed working with all of you. And um, have a wonderful, happy and a happy Valentine's Day and a wonderful February. And I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.